David here with Fig Boon on pens back again with another fountain pen review. You know, one of the things I love about this hobby is that every once in a while you will come across something brand new. Uh, maybe it's something that's new to the market, uh, or maybe it's just something that's new to you and has been around for a while. But when you see it, that new thing, you're instantly attracted and know that it's something that you need to investigate further. And there's a very strong probability that it will get added to your collection. Uh, it's fun to get excited about something like that. And today I have for you a pen that did exactly just that for me. Uh, it's a pen from a company by the name of Makar Knives and Tools, and the model is called the Torpedo. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Torpedo. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'm going to show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. I first became aware of Makar via Instagram. Um, I saw a couple of pictures of their pens and was just blown away. Um, you'll see why I had that reaction here in just a bit. Um, I contacted the company and commissioned a pen. Uh, Makar is a company based out of Poland uh, in a city by the name of Olsztyn. It's in the northern part of the country. Uh, the company is a one-man shop and that man is Marcin Wojciech. Now, I hope I'm getting that correct. My Polish is a little bit rusty. Now, Makar, which is M-A-K-A-R, in Polish is short for noodle. Now, that's because Marcin used to be tall and skinny when he was younger, and that's what his friends started calling him, and the nickname just stuck. Uh, Marcin offers a number of different items on his site. Uh, he makes uh, a bolt-action rollerball pen that looks really cool. Uh, something that's neat is that this pen is designed so that if the bolt is activated and the tip extended, the bolt actually blocks the clip from being used. So it prevents you from being able to clip the pen on a pocket while it's extended, preventing you from potentially having uh, an incident. Uh, I think that that's just a rather clever design element. Uh, he makes things like uh, bit drivers. Uh, they have a really cool design element that incorporates Morris code. You can customize the rings near the back to say something like uh, your name. Uh, I love hidden symbols and meanings like that. Uh, he also makes knives. Uh, here's one of the models, uh, again, with a more traditional Morris code element. This knife here was apparently made for someone by the name of Greg, or at least that's what the name in Morris code on the handle says. But what we're here today to talk about is a fountain pen. It arrives in this cardboard box. On it is the Makar logo. I think it looks really cool. It has the wings and then it has the M and the W, which are Marcin's initials. Uh, inside the box here, we have a little bit of information about the company. Uh, there is some uh, card here, which has some information about this specific pen. I'll show you during the writing sample, but this card contains a little hidden surprise. Uh, and then we have this nice leather sleeve. Um, it's debossed with the Makar logo. And then inside we have the pen. This is the Makar Torpedo. Uh, this pen is just stunning. Uh, as the name would imply, it does have a torpedo shape. It's made from titanium and the distinctive feature of this pen are the dimples. Uh, they are created by drilling holes in the material uh, and then the entire surface is anodized and then afterwards the material is sanded down only leaving the anodization within the divots. Uh, it's a very cool visual element. It's unlike anything else I had seen on a pen before. Marcin was kind enough to send along some pictures and video of the creation process of this pen. Uh, it begins with a solid titanium rod. Uh, that rod is then bored out I like seeing all of the curls of metal that come off the rod. Uh, the technical term for that is swarf. Uh, and then the taper at the end of the cap is created. Uh, it's neat to see some of the creation process and what goes into the creation of your pen. Since this was a custom pen, Marcin would ask questions as to some of my preferences and even go as far as send diagrams to help me understand the choices. This diagram here shows the different ways to design the transition from the cap to the barrel and if I wanted it to be smooth or if it should have some chamfers where the transition has a uh, tapered groove. I chose the straight look. Uh, Marcin made me feel uh, really a part of the creation process and the end results are just amazing. Okay, let's take a closer look at what I feel is a very cool pen. Uh, as you saw it being made, the top of the cap comes to a point. I don't find it to be overly sharp. 
This is a clipless design. The divot filled barrel is straight. And then at the end, there is a band which is engraved with the Makar name. Uh, there is a smooth transition to the barrel, which begins with this really cool roll stop. It's made from Moku Tai, which is a look I really like. Uh, Moku Tai is made from layers of titanium combined by forging, and the result is some material with some amazing patterning. I would love to have a full Moku Tai pen someday. That would be rather neat. This is what the roll stop looks like before it's been affixed to the barrel. Uh, at first, I wondered why the roll stop was on the barrel rather than the cap. On most pens, it's typically on the cap. But after thinking about it, it made sense. Um, if for some reason you set the pen down when it is uncapped, the roll stop will still do its job. Uh, if it were only on the cap, then that wouldn't be the case. So that's another element of thoughtful design. Uh, the barrel is straight, and at the end it tapers down to a point matching the one on the cap. The cap twists off with just under two rotations, and underneath we have a very cool looking number no. 5 Bach titanium nib. Um, I think having it coated in purple looks fantastic and matches well with the overall look and theme of this pen. Uh, the nib is engraved with the Makar logo. Uh, while I typically prefer a number no. 6 nib, I, I feel the number no. 5 is more appropriate for this particular pen. Uh, the titanium nibs in my collection are a bit of a mixed bag. There are some which I care for and others that are just okay. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, but the one on this pen is outstanding. I really care for it. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The end of the section is slightly raised. Uh, there was a lot of attention to detail paid to this pen. It's almost imperceptible, but I like how they're near the end of the section. There are two narrow grooves which are anodized in purple. Uh, it's a subtle accent, but one that I care for. The section angles up slightly until it reaches the cap threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable if your grip should rest on them. And then there's a step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, the section is covered in dimples, which gives it a very distinct look. Um, at first, you might think that having a rather uneven surface covered in dimples wouldn't provide for a comfortable grip, but I, I don't find that to be the case. The edges of the dimples are very smooth, and they do a good job of helping you maintain your grip on this rather long and thin section. Uh, the dimples are small and varied enough that your grip really doesn't fall into any of them, and it doesn't force your grip into a specific position. Now, this section is very narrow for my personal tastes, but this is a narrow pen. Uh, Marcin sent me a drawing with different options for the section in order to give me some choices, and I selected option A. While I wouldn't want all of the pens in my collection to have a section this thin, I feel it's size appropriate for the pen, and I do like it as a bit of variety in my collection. Um, I do find the pen to be well balanced. Uh, while it has a bit of heft to it, I wouldn't describe it as overly heavy. Uh, the cap is not designed to post, which is fine because the barrel is plenty long enough to use comfortably. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, with this pen being all titanium, you could eyedropper it if you so choose, but uh, the section threads are rather narrow, so you would need maybe an O-ring and sufficient silicone gel. Um, personally, I don't think it's worth the hassle, but in theory, it could be possible. Uh, Makar pens are only available from the company website. I will put a link to it in the notes below. Uh, Marcin will also, from time to time, make things available via Instagram. Uh, if you wanted to see some very cool pen eye candy, then I would recommend following him. I'll put a link to both the site and his Instagram page in the notes below this video. Now, on a custom pen like this, the price will vary depending on the options you choose. Uh, this particular pen set me back around $575, so if you are interested in something along these lines, expect the cost to be around that price range. Uh, that's not inexpensive, but what you are receiving is a unique, handmade, custom piece of art which is very well crafted. Uh, in the case of models like this, no two pens are ever going to be the same in regard to the dimpling pattern. Uh, it's something I very much care for and have not regretted the purchase at all at that price point. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Uh, 
I mentioned there was something a little special about this particular card. Uh, if you use a black light on it, uh, Marcin actually sent me a little message on it. It says, for David. And then down here below, it says, have a nice day. Uh, I just thought that was a, a fun little addition. Okay, here we go with some size comparisons for the Makar Torpedo. I just want to give you another closer look at all of these dimples here, uh, as well as that roll stop. That roll stop is just amazing. And the combination of that with the dimples uh, and the titanium, uh, it just makes for a very special pen. In regard to some size comparisons of some other metal pens, uh, here it is with a Visconti. Uh, this is a Opera Metal Speedboat. Here it is with a Gravitas Skittles. Uh, and then here it is with a Keras Custom Ink. And in regard to a couple of other metal pens, here it is with a Wancher Stardust. Uh, and then here it is with a Graf von Faber-Castell Anello Rose Gold. Uh, and then finally here it is with one more Graf von Faber-Castell. This is the uh, Barnado. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Opera Metal Speedboat, and there is then the Gravitas in the Skittles, and here is the Keras Custom Ink. Okay, here we go with the writing sample for the Makar. Torpedo. This is a medium titanium nib, uh, and the ink that I'm using is Pilot Irosuzuku Murasaki Shikabu. This is what the ink looks like. It's one of my favorite purples in my collection. Uh, this is what it looks like with the Birmingham Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple, which is another one of my favorite purples. And then finally, here it is with Mont Blanc Beetle's Psychedelic Purple. This is what the Orochizuku bottles look like. They're fantastic. I think they look amazing. They're one of my favorite uh, bottle designs, especially with this little, we'll call it a teardrop at the bottom that helps you uh, uh, get all of the ink out of the bottle when you need to. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I will say that the titanium has a distinct feel to it. It does not feel as uh, stiff as a stainless steel nib. Uh, you can get a fair amount of uh, line variation out of here, um, but it doesn't necessarily feel as bouncy and soft as a gold nib. It's an interesting feeling to it. Uh, in regard to ink flow, I found that this medium nib has a decent amount of ink flow to it. And in regard to reverse writing, It's a little sharp, but it gets the job done in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So here we have the Makar Torpedo. Um, I've always thought that it's important to support individual artisans and the work that they create. And when they create work this amazing and this fantastic uh, that performs this well, then it's very easy to provide that support. Um, I hope that you check out his stuff, whether it's on his website or on his Instagram page. Even if it's just for eye candy, it's well worth checking out. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.